Welcome to Lynn Farmstead. It's a beautiful morning and we're still on the quest to plant or extend our apple orchards at zero cost or at least minimal cost. And today we're doing one of the most significant uh, steps that you have to take in this journey and you want to do an experiment on grafting because you see it doesn't matter how many rootstocks you have if you cannot convert them into actual grafted fruits then it's all in vain <laughs> Yes. I've had these trees in my backyard garden for three years now, two years going to three years, and this is the first time ever that I'm trying to graft. I've watched so many videos on how this is done, and still, I'm still nervous at this point because this is my first time ever, but I'm looking beyond that intimidation to actually give it a try because what can go wrong <laughs> it, it will either work or not so it's all good so i'm trying to graft my uh pink lady variety onto my rootstock the rootstock that has been growing in the garden for some time now this is like almost three years going so it's mature enough and it doesn't have a lot of uh, stems branching from the root so we're just going to, to, it's the perfect one for this experiment. I love how the pink lady produces around here. It has really beautiful fl uh, fruit sets and that's one of the reasons why I'm choosing it. But of course the end goal is to graft so many other varieties. So the idea is to get a branch of the, or a scion, the desired variety. This is the pink lady variety the leaves are kind of different quite different from this one i don't know if you can tell the difference it's not so visible on camera actually but it's quite different the leaf structure is quite different and even the stem the stem structure is also quite different from the wambugo one see now this is more clear so this is the wambugo apple and this is the pink lady but this right here is the rootstock that we've just cut and i'm thinking this is a better fit because it's kinda the same in height and it's mature enough i've had the the pink lady for a long time in the farm i think this is like the third year going to the third year almost the third year and so i believe this is a, a mature enough graft so i'm going to cut a little bit so the idea is of course if you're going to put all this in there it's not going to even balance and it will <laughs> disconnect at the grafting point so i'll just do a tip a tip will also have a better chance of survival just a small one like this much will have a better chance of survival because it doesn't require much to keep it alive and that's the idea we want to keep it alive until they connect with the rootstock so that it can now start growing on its own independently while connected to the root that's going to support it give it better adaptability and it's going to grow faster because this thing has been here for quite some time the root structure has gone all the way by now deep enough to go and look for minerals and water and that's going to now help our little baby right here to adapt faster and to grow even faster so this is my experiment this is the first time i'm trying to to graft and the idea is I want to see if it works on the ground so that when I'm ready with the rootstock, enough rootstock, then I'm going to now go in from a point of experience, having tried and tested. And I'm hoping that you all are going to give me feedback where I go wrong so that I can do it better. Let's grow. 
lots and lots of free <laughs> apples in our garden this time round. I'm always fascinated by all your comments. Some of you, it seems, have already been doing this stuff and I'm late to the game. But thank you so much because of all the feedback that you gave me. And for those of you that have been encouraging me to start grafting experiments in readiness for the actual work later on when I have enough fruit stock, thank you, thank you so much. So the idea from my research and from your Good feedback year, is I want to like use this little thing here I don't know whether to call it a tip to, to like uh, graft onto the rootstock and so I want them to combine perfectly at the grafting area which is the reason I'm making this sharp pointed shape like a tip that's sharp pointed so I, I go in with a sharp knife. Seems like my knife is not sharp enough. <laughs> I'll do better. I'm learning on the job, so please bear with me. I, I know a lot of us are like me and they're afraid to start, but I'm, I'm learning on the job and on the camera so that we all can have the guts to try this for ourselves because in Kiswahili, we say Nikitria Macho. Anyone can actually do this. Even the nurseries where we buy this stuff from, the, the people there, the, the investors, you know, don't do this themselves. They train people and the people strike. help them to graft onto the rootstock. So essentially, anyone can do this. You don't even need skills. You don't need to have to go for a cause. You just have to use your observation and do it yourself so this i believe is the right way to combine them i'm trying to ensure that they are well aligned which will make it easier for them to merge and become one the other reason i've been keeping off trying this is because i thought i needed a grafting tip but i came to realize that essentially you just want to make sure this thing is tight enough and will not like uh, let go so several materials have been used over the years and it doesn't have to be a grafting tape especially for my experiment because this is not a large scale one so i went in with my usual silo tape because it's kind of going to seal off the injured part the wound and then again it's not going to allow a lot of water to interfere with the healing process and it holds quite well but again i realized that it might not hold for long because the, the glue holding it together might come off at some point. So I'll reinforce I'll reinforce the silo tape holding the wound together with a string to hold it much firmer. So I'm improvising a lot. I'm working with what's locally available. Don't be like me. <laughs> Go for the right materials. You'll need yourself the grafting tape. If you want to do a lot, you want to, at some point I'll also have to go and buy the grafting tape. But I'm just uh, starting from this point as an experiment because this is going to now give me a baseline to start an entire process of grafting more varieties and planting my own seedlings. So that's the goal. If you also want to expand your apple orchard you don't have to buy everything you'll need to buy at some point because you, you need different varieties a number of them but you can replace those that are broken by yourself so this is what we now have it's firm enough because of the string and i'm also going to cover this upper part with these uh, plastic cups because it's going to protect it from direct sunlight which might make the little tip right there dry off faster and also it's going to protect the he the wound from infection because of the rains i'll also make sure that the ground is moistened in this process and i'll be keeping in touch and checking and reporting back on the progress of this little experiment when this works we're now going to be sure to go large scale <laughs> because it's good to start small i hope you start too and let me know what, how 